The Veil Reef is often hailed as the best low-level money-making method, but with how often the reef gets updated, the exact amount it can make you is a bit unclear. Today, I will be showcasing and testing the Sea Veil Reef to find out if it is truly the best. The reason Sea Veil Reef is considered to be so good is because it has no requirements to do. There are several things that can improve your ability to make money here, but they are not required even though I highly recommend them. I'll start by explaining and showing the method, then I will cover all of the different ways you can improve it. Seaville Reef is located to the east of an island in the center of the ocean called Selchar, Selkar, Selchair, one of those I think. Go ahead and debate the pronunciation in the comments below. If you've been to the island before, you can just use a teleport scroll to reach it, but if this is your first time going there, allow me to show you how to get to the reef. Starting from Ragni, you simply travel north out this exit. To get to the island the first time, you will only need 12 emeralds, which if you somehow don't already have, you can easily find in chests on your walk over to the boat from Ragni. You travel along, there's going to be a zombie militia right here. They're a little strong, they're level 30. If you're under level 30 and you don't think you can fight them and would rather not risk it, simply climb up here and go around. They won't bother you. And then you continue on the road into Nemract. If you've been to Nemract before but haven't been to Selchar, you could simply take a teleport scroll to Nemract. And from here, you will head over to the docks. And we're gonna go all the way to the last dock over here to the Sea Skipper. Hello, Sea Skipper Captain. You'll hop on the boat. You'll use the little thing. And the first option is the Selchar uh, travel. Um, mine is free because I've done a quest to make it so, but if you've never been here before and you haven't done the quest, it will be 12 emeralds. Once you arrive, climb the stairs to the north and immediately to the left upon reaching the top is a stall with the treasure merchant. This man will be buying all of our loot from us, so make sure you know how to get to him. From here, simply head right to the eastern edge of the island and jump down into the water and swim out to the reef. The reef is very large and has lots of little treasures spawning all over the place that you can collect. These treasures range in value from one emerald all the way up to two emerald blocks, which is 128 emeralds. There are seven tier two chests hidden throughout the caves in the reef. Next to these chests, you can find the treasures that are worth two emerald blocks each, but are quite rare, and the Coral of Nelfors, which is used for the Temple of Legends quest and is completely worthless outside of that. The method itself is pretty simple. Just swim around collecting treasures until your inventory is full, go back to the island and sell everything to the merchant, then repeat the process. I have all the different like types of things marked because as you can see, I've got like huge pearl right here. Right down here in this little canyon here is a hotspot spawn point for huge pearls. If you look at another one, for instance, let's go this one right here. It says bars because this is a hotspot spawn point for the sunken silver and gold bars. The different treasures will spawn in all the different locations, but those hot spots spawn a very large number of those items in particular. The ones that say miscellaneous, they either just spawn a whole bunch of things and I wasn't able to discern what they spawned, or I just took note of the location and didn't actually check. But I've got coral sapphires spawning there, the uh, silver and gold blocks, more bars, got gold nuggets and large pearls, more bars, got the rubies. Got the gold and silver bundles, bars and large pearls, rubies, rubies, uh, gold and silver blocks, We've got the topaz, more bundles, amethysts and rubies, bars, bars, more bundles, rubies, large pearls, more bundles, a whole bunch of them, and then the seven uh, chest locations. And you just travel around, just collect all the loot that you can, and it will just fill up your inventory. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start myself a timer here on the bottom left. I'm going to do this for two hours, and we're going to see how much money we can make. Something I forgot to show that I can do, I can go into the map, I can go to manage waypoints up at the top, edit beacon groups. I set all of these beacons to be diamonds, I can enable it, and then now I can see where everything is visually. I would highly advise going through marking all the different locations of things, and then doing this so you can go hunt down the things that you want. It also allows you just to know where all the different hotspots are, so you can literally just go back and forth between one hotspot and another. Be like, boom, hotspot, 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 and you can just collect everything. And doing this, you can always make sure to prioritize the good loot over, you know, the bad loot. 
Yeah, as you can see right here around the chest, there's a whole bunch of stuff spawning. And one of the things that spawned here was Coral of Nelfors, which I'm just going to throw in there. Oh, Morph Steel. Cool. Because the corals are literally worthless, and I just want to get them out of my inventory. Oh, there we go. There's a diamond. I'm going to take the diamond. So that I can show it off. There's two diamonds. As you can see, there are other people here. They These people are on different worlds. And the different worlds that you're on have different loot. Uh, if someone is on the same world as you, just go to the hub, slash hub, and switch worlds to a different one. That way you two don't compete with one another, because you don't want someone snagging all your good loot. Alright, my inventory is now full. Let's go to the small pearls that I don't want. So it allows me to keep picking up things. And that's going to be the end of it. There's my first trip. Took me about 11 minutes. So I'm utilizing a tier 8 emerald pouch, because that's the pouch that I already had. Um, you don't have to use a tier 8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control shift Q and I'm going to throw out some of this stuff and then I'm going to very quickly go and we're going to... The shop will close when you run out of something and try and sell but don't have any of it. And with that, we have one liquid emerald and 20 emerald blocks in 13 minutes from the time it took me to gather all that and then return to the reef. And then unfortunately we have to wait for stuff to start spawning again. If you want this to be even better money, you can grab an alt account and have it sit above the reef in a boat and then that will keep the reef constantly spawning loot while you're selling everything. And with that, we have now sold off everything. We finish the two hours. We had another like 30 seconds. So I could have grabbed a little bit more, but we finished with just shy of 10 liquid emeralds. Uh, we got a little unlucky toward the end there, and I also stopped 30 seconds early. So again, I could have gone for another like 20 seconds gathering some loot, depending on what loot I got. It would determine how much it is. So it's just about five liquid emeralds per hour when you factor in selling everything, which is pretty good. It's actually a little better than it used to be. Now that I've shown you the method and we know how much I made from my testing, let me go over everything that can be done to improve the amount of money you can make. First, you can only stay underwater for 15 seconds before you run out of air and begin to drown. Once you start drowning, you will get hit once every second for 3% of your max health. To fix this issue, the level 8 quest underwater has you retrieve a breathing helmet that you get to keep once the quest is over. This breathing helmet increases the length of time you can stay underwater before you run out of air to 60 seconds instead of 15, and then it makes you take damage from drowning once every 4 seconds. This can be further improved by acquiring the breathing helmet 2, which is obtained during the level 43 quest under ice. The breathing helmet 2 increases the length of time you can stay underwater before you run out of air to 1 minute and 40 seconds, and then it makes you take damage from drowning once every 7 seconds. Getting at least the first breathing helmet is highly recommended, and if you're able to, I would certainly say to get the breathing helmet 2 as well. The next item that is very useful to have is an emerald pouch. Selling your items to the treasure merchant will fill your inventory with emeralds very quickly, and an emerald pouch will let you quickly clear your inventory and continue selling without needing to travel to the bank to put your emeralds away. Not all emerald pouches are created equal, however. The tier 1, 2, and 3 emerald pouches are completely useless here. The tier 1 and 2 pouches will both be completely full before you finish selling your inventory of loot, and depending on how much you got in a particular trip, the tier 3 pouch will be too. This means you have to run back to the bank after every trip anyway, which just wastes your time. The minimum emerald pouch I would advise you get is the tier 4, that pouch is the worst usable pouch available. It only has 9 slots, so in filling it you will have to close the pouch and reopen it repeatedly, and then it will start filling up more and more as you make trips to the reef and become less and less effective. The next worst pouch is the tier 7 pouch. It doesn't fill up completely over time like the tier 4 pouch does, but it also only has 9 slots, so you have to constantly close and reopen it to store your emeralds. The tier 5 pouch is what I would advise as a good starting point. You can afford this pouch after a single inventory at the reef, and it has 27 slots to fill with emeralds, so while it will gradually fill up, it has so much extra space that you won't have to worry about that for a while. The tier 6 pouch is the same as tier 5, but with double the slots, which means you won't notice it filling up for a long time. Lastly, the tier 8 and above pouches. 
These are by far the best option, since they will basically never fill up and all have enough slots to dump pretty much your entire inventory of emeralds every time. These pouches are quite expensive though, so unless you plan to make 20 hour trips to the reef, I wouldn't advise getting these just yet. The next thing you will need is health regen. Not health regen percent, just raw health regen. Items can give a flat amount of health regen and or they can boost your total by a percentage and we want that flat health regen. With high enough health regen and low enough health, you can out regen the damage drowning does to you, thus allowing you to stay underwater without ever needing to surface. Just note, using this to sit AFK in the reef and collect drops is a direct violation of rule number 19, which reads, quote, you may not receive benefits of any kind, XP, items, emeralds, etc., if you are AFK. This includes passive drops. You must be inputting actions to receive rewards, using sustainable builds that take advantage of health regeneration, thorns, reflection, and or major IDs such as Guardian, Heart of the Pact, and Magnet is not allowed while AFK. This includes boring or collecting drops at Sea Vale Reef. If you choose to break this rule in AFK here, just note you will probably get banned. Mana regen is the next useful stat to have, however, thanks to the 2.0 update and the changes to intelligence, it is much less important than it used to be, but it is still get as much as you can. High mana regen will allow you to cast your movement spell more often to make travel between Seltar and the Reef easier and to allow you to collect the drops a bit quicker. Walk speed is the last useful stat to have. It has little to no noticeable effect in water, and it's only beneficial for travel between the treasure merchant and the reef itself, but for this reason it is still nice to have. The last two things you can do to improve the rate you can make money at the reef are both pretty big game changers, but unfortunately as of the recording of this video you cannot do both at the same time. In Minecraft version 1.13 and above, you gain the ability to swim. This increases the speed at which you can travel around underwater and will noticeably increase the speed at which you can collect loot from the reef. However, I would argue playing in 1.12.2 is better with the Windtills mod because of one simple feature, bulk buy. The merchant we sell our treasure to is technically selling us emeralds in exchange for the loot we have. Windtills for 1.12.2 has a feature that allows you to shift click to buy more than one item at a time from a shop. The default setting is three at once, but you can go into the configuration options via the quest book in game, go to utilities, and scroll down about halfway until you find a slider for bulk buy amount and increase it all the way up to 16. This will allow you to trade in a full stack of treasure in just four clicks instead of needing to click 64 times to sell them all. This makes farming the reef considerably less click intensive and much faster for selling loot. Currently, Windtills is in development for version 1.9. 19.3, but it does not yet have this feature. If you do opt to go with Windtills, you will need to go into your Minecraft folder, go to Windtills, then Configs, then in the third folder look for Utilities Overlay Drowning Vignette. Open this in Notepad and change it from True to False, then Save and Close. By default, Windtills adds an intensifying blue haze around your screen when underwater that makes it really hard to see properly once you run out of air. Changing this setting to False disables that. For some reason, the setting is not able to be changed in game and is only available via this config. Seaville Reef has changed many times, but it is always a consistent source of money for new and or broke players. Currently, you can make almost 5 LE per hour doing it, and going forward, this will be my baseline for determining what is a good money maker. If it doesn't make more than Seaville Reef, it isn't good, and if it makes less than Seaville Reef, it is just bad. So with that, I thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all later.